have awakened, and this is just going to be the beginning of something very, very big for this country. I thought Ron Paul would probably be in the mix for that and could finish as high as third in New Hampshire. He finished a couple of thousand votes out of that. Um, and with a lot of support both in-state and uh, with out-of-state people coming to New Hampshire to try and promote the message. I was totally surprised by how the results went, but I mean, what, what can you do at this point uh, besides not agree with it? After Super Tuesday, which was in February, um, a lot of enthusiasm just got drained away. Super Tuesday is almost completely in the books. The polls get ready to close for Republicans. Here we are. New Jersey, Republican primary. John McCain, we project the winner. In New York, also John McCain. In Connecticut, we project John McCain, the winner there as well. California is his. McCain is garnering enough GOP support. McCain with a large sweep of victories around the country. feel it in your heart, you know the guy is right, you want him to win, and the numbers don't show. You see the support, what, what do you do? I mean, of course you're going to get discouraged. Though victory in the conventional political sense is not available in the presidential race, we must remember elections are short-term efforts, revolutions are long-term projects. I was disappointed when that letter went up on the website. I didn't want it to end. I wanted Ron Paul to stay the course. You know, there's, you know, it's, it's not for me to say, I mean, who would want to be in a mess like that? Who would want to campaign the way that he had to campaign for as many months? You know, it's a thankless task. He was the vehicle by which we could express our dissent. Give a finger to the man all the way up to the end as far as we could take this. But there's another thing that I think we ought to do. We ought to make a grand display. We ought to have a true march to show what our numbers are. Ron Paul came out with his video, you know, telling people that he wanted to have a march. And they took it upon themselves to organize it. And they did it themselves without the campaign, without Ron Paul. They just did it. My theory has always been that if you ever can bring about revolutionary changes, two things would be required. The young people would have to be involved, you'd have to have music. That was like the thrill of a lifetime, me playing in front of the Capitol building with all those protests. It felt like something out of the 60s, 60s or something that I'd only seen, you know, previously. The revolution is Ninety-five, hundred degrees. It was unbelievably muggy and hot and miserable. But these people showed up, and the DC police told us that at the height of the march, there had to be 15,000 people there. As Iraq veterans against the war, we are resisting an occupation we once risked our lives for. We swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States of America, but we found out the hard way that the greatest enemies of the Constitution are not to be found in the sands of some far-off land, but rather right here at home. Central planners, no more bailouts and billions for the bankers. We're surrounded by the John McCain's, the Bob Dole's, Hillary Clinton's, Barack Obama's, Chuck Schumer's, all these interchangeable nobodies and liars and thieves and killers. Even though people were upset about the government, upset about some of the things that are happening, it was so happy. Yes, 
after the Revolution March, people started talking about the Rally for the Republic, and it was like the next big thing, and everybody was really excited about it. And I started getting all these emails like, hey, I'll see you in Minnesota, really looking forward to hearing you again. St. Paul happens to be the evil twin this year. The GOP convention was getting ready. Everything was kind of blocked off, so that's what made it such a ghost town. And then you have the, uh, the military standing on the roof of the building uh, with their binoculars. You have the national police state in evidence at the Republican convention and at the Democratic convention. I mean, it's just with all of this security and this elevation of these people into some sort of American royalty. What I understand is they spent $50 million on security. They built a cage around this building. They had riot cops, you know, they had their big billy clubs and their uh, tie wraps for handcuffing people, and they were just looked intimidating as hell. You know, the Republican Party has all the money. They could spend tens of millions of dollars on their crummy convention. We got these huge billboards, you know, with Ron Paul quotations up on them, greeting the delegates as they get there. And I thought, man, that is such a gutsy, in-your-face thing. Things that are in your face, we are here, man. You know, we are not, we are not going away. Ron Paul came on into the university area and met with us. He led us for two miles through the streets, proving that you can lead the country at 73 years old. It was just a joy to be able to walk with him, walk behind him, around him. He led us over to the Fed building, and we were just chanting and cheering the whole time. We have just finished off uh, leading a protest march to the Minneapolis Federal Reserve Bank, where Ron Paul gave a wonderful speech in front of this wonderful palace dedicated to fake money. certainly was an act of defiance to go ahead and choose an arena just on the opposite side of town from where the national convention is going on. Even after the guy is not in the race anymore, I mean, again, who is doing this for any other candidate? Who would do it even if being paid to do it? And this is real. This is where it's at. This is where, we're, you know, this is where we take our country back. We just arrived for the big event, for the Rally for the Republic. We're ready to go. Everybody's pumped. Everybody's excited. Ideas spread. They can't stop them. An idea whose time has come cannot be stopped by any army or any government. It was the culmination of everything that his whole campaign stood for. In a stadium like that, and to see all these people interested in something that, that I thought I was a loner, you know, almost in, a, in the ideas, and I'm sure Ron Paul felt the same way at one time. In the past 18 months, it was discovered that the ideas of liberty and the revolution was alive and well, and we're celebrating it here tonight. History constantly recycles and reinvents itself. Ron Paul touched a nerve, a deep nerve. Some people didn't even know that it was there till he touched it. So once again, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the trust that you have placed in me, but more so the trust that you have placed in the concept of our God-given rights to our life and our liberty. Thank you very much. But I almost feel as if he's saying, you know what, if people want what I'm offering, they'll make it happen. And I think that's why the grassroots just simply hasn't given up on him. We want an America full of principled people. Not people who say one thing and do something else. Say anything to get elected. But who say what they mean, they mean what they say, and they live their lives by those principles. And that's why he can animate the, the grassroots. So 
the long term, it's changing people's hearts and minds, and that's where we've made the progress. Uh, but really what has happened is we have awakened uh, a lot of people uh, to look into our philosophy. Don't give up. Don't retreat into cynicism. Even if we don't win, life is about fighting for something greater than yourself. It's a good thing to fight for what's right, and it's enjoyable to fight for what's right, and it's immensely satisfying to fight for what's right. Let it not be said that we did nothing. I have no doubt that what was sparked by Ron Paul is not finished. It, it's not consummated. It's, uh, it's ongoing. What we saw in 2007 and 2008 was the beginning of something that not only is still with us and it endures. Why? Because it is about policy. It is about ideas. It's time. I want my freedom back. Who else wants the freedom back? Yeah! 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 The Federal Reserve, which many conservatives now recognize is the root of our financial problems, that was off the board. You couldn't talk about it a couple years ago. Can we talk about it now? Why? Due in large part to Ron Paul, thanks to the fact that he was running for president. He was Tea Party before there was a Tea Party. And that was certainly the beginnings of what we recognize as the Tea Party today. It was the genesis, if you will. People who never cared about politics before got involved. What brings me out here today is that the people who need to let this government know, both state and national, that we are fed up and we have had it. If you voted for TARP, you're out. If you voted for the bailouts, you're out. If you supported Bush's spending, you're out. The Tea Party doesn't like that. And that's why a guy like Ron Paul becomes more popular, because his, his conscience and his record are clean. But we have gone a long way from the dictates of the Constitution. That is not part of the American tradition. Fox News is broadcasting it right now. Ron Paul won the struggle against Mitt Romney. 31% to 22%. When freedom dies, in your heart. No speech, no emotion, not even a reaction to a tyrant can bring it back. But when freedom lives in your heart, no speech and no tyrant can take it away. God bless you. A show like Judge Andrew Napolitano's show Freedom March on Fox Business wouldn't have even been popular two or three years ago. The views that he expresses, accepted by mainstream conservative audiences in a primetime slot on a major network like that, that's a revolution in and of itself. We had a little election down in Kentucky. <laughs> We've come to take our government back! Rand Paul winning the election, becoming a senator, has a little different style than his dad. It's basically the same constitutional conservative message, but between the two, you're seeing a bigger, a bolder liberty movement. To see how much influence Ron Paul is having on Capitol Hill now versus the past decade, where he gets to question members of the Federal Reserve in front of everybody gets to drag Austrian economists up there on Capitol Hill and question them. That's a revolution in and of itself. People are hearing things that are not Keynesian economics. They're hearing things that are the exact opposite of what they've always been told. Why does that happen? Why does Ron Paul have that chair? Because you cannot deny his influence, and even his harshest critics on the Republican side now have to admit it, accept it, and deal with it. Put your hands together as I introduce the champion of the Constitution, Congressman Ron Paul. to see the revolution is continuing. The winner of the straw poll, wow. Congressman Ron Paul.